to share with us this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. How many of you love you, Pastor? Amen. 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 And you are blessed to have them. Amen. Amen. I just, uh, what a privilege to be here. How many know we serve a good God? Amen. You know, I know God's plans for every one of you today. Amen. They're good. Amen. You can spell God G-O-O-D. He's a good, good God with good Amen. plans. Amen. Amen. And uh, what a privilege to be here. I just, uh, an honor to be here. You know, I believe in divine connections. I also believe in divine disconnections. Amen. 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 But I believe that there is something about people of faith when they join together, the impossible happens. And Amen. I want to be friends with your pastor. And, and Cynthia until Jesus comes. Amen. Amen. And then even after that. Amen. 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 I tried to learn how to say, I asked Siri how to say uh, Jesus loves football uh, in Portuguese. But I didn't want to embarrass myself. I kind of was, I wasn't quite getting it. But uh, this Super Bowl Sunday, I believe God's going to do something great today. Amen. And uh, you can be seated. I'm Benjamin. Can I introduce you to my tribe of Benjamites? <laughs> Guys, come on up here real quick. They travel with me all across the nation. This is Lady, Colton, Elsie, Preston, Riker, and number six on the way. Amen. Let me know. I mean, no, I couldn't have done it without Gabriella. Amen. I couldn't have done it without Gabriella. What a wonderful wife and mother she is. But these guys have a unique life. We have been seeing people come to Jesus in Florida, Kentucky. Uh, we're going soon to Ohio, Vermont. We've seen people, I mean, all over the nation. We give God all the glory. But we've been scheduled for months and months at a time, all across yeah. the country, Praise seeing God. people saved. And, and the, my wife homeschools them, and uh, they travel with me all over. But sometimes they like to sing a song. You think they can sing a song real quick? Yeah. yeah. Ahead, you, want to, you want to testify something real quick? Go ahead. Tell us something. Uh, go ahead, Luke. Oh, yes, oh, she's taking the mic. Go ahead, go ahead. I think we'll give it maybe Dana Foyer. No, no. thankful his parents got married. We were married before the children. New Jersey, less than a million miles from here. 
And, and Patterson, man, we saw so many things, and God is still moving there. But those years uh, we pastored, God birthed, and uh, in our family, God birthed the Jericho Road homeless shelters. And we give God, again, all the glory. It's all for him. But thousands and thousands of men have come through these homes that we have called Jericho Road. And we have, it's one of the coolest things to watch people come with holes in their shoes, been living on the streets for years, straight out of prison. We take murderers, we take guys that have the ankle things uh, uh, tracking, and we take anybody. I love those guys with the ankle GPS thing. I say, man, you got more accountability than anybody. We laugh about it. But they come in, and within just weeks, we watch the word of God lift them where they're working a job, free from addiction, wearing a suit, tithing. Amen. Now any church would want to yeah. have them. Amen? Amen? We watch the word of God transform lives right in front. And it's, it's all about an atmosphere of faith. They come into an atmosphere of faith in these homes. And so I don't get to see them much now. God sent our family out full-time evangelizing. And Pastor Joe is the city pastor there now. And it's so exciting. We have seen thousands of people fed in our food outreach. And guess what? It's the men of Jericho Road that for years have led our food outreach. Men that were once homeless, now feeding the hungry. Yeah. I mean, that's fun to watch. Yeah. That's fun to see someone that was just sleeping under a bridge, now feeding the hungry. Yeah. Yeah. God has, uh, it's just amazing. And see, it's such a big part of their growth because they get the attention off themselves and on to saying, I've got purpose. I don't need to be drinking anymore and using anymore. God has a purpose for my life. It's so much fun to watch it. Just real quick, let's, uh, you guys, why don't you come down here real quick? Some of the guys joined us today. These are some men from Jericho Road. These guys, you can make a movie on every one of their lives. Amen. I'm Amen. telling you what. Give them a hand today. We're so thankful. Just this week, it looks like God has opened up an additional property where we're going to have more beds than ever before uh, in just a matter of weeks. And God is moving. So we're just so thankful. But guys, I want to come here real quick. Uh, Joe, why don't you go ahead and tell, uh, tell your story real quick. Um, real quick, uh, there was a time I was married. I um, had two sons in their 30s. On my own four bedroom brick home. After 13 years, drug and alcohol ruined my marriage. I started using drugs at the age of 12. Um, after I got divorced, I went on death run. I've been shot twice. Stabbed twice, and my jaw broke in two places at the same time, and lost count of how many stitches I've had. I've been in Jericho Road now going on ooh, <coughs> 15, 16 years, totally changed my life. Amen. Um, Praise God. I, I, like Pastor Ben said, seen thousands of men come through there and change their lives. Uh, God has definitely changed mine. Uh, he put me in a position now where I help all of these men. Fulfill the purpose that God put them here. Amen. And most of the time, people spend a lot of time looking for what God's purpose is. Yeah. And I happen to just step into mine and I'm blessed. And I tell these guys, I'm going to be doing it until I'm walking around like this. <laughs> <laughs> this is Green here. Green, come on here real quick. Green was shot as a kid, is that right? Yes. Shot in the tell us real quick. How you doing, guys? Hey. I was shot at the age of eight years old. I have a scar on my head from that, but God has blessed me so that you can look at me and tell that, no, that didn't happen. But uh, God brought me to Jericho Road from having a drug addiction. I was molested as a little boy in foster home. God has put, brought me to a place where I can help others. And all that stuff that happened to me is basically in the past. It's yesterday's call. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 You guys, this is Jose Santana. Make sure you say hi to all these guys uh, after service. But uh, Kareem there, he, uh, I think his father may have been Barry White. Remember the old son? Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, he's a little bit like Barry White. 
That's, that's old school there. But uh, I think uh, the Lord may have a future for him in being a DJ. Smooth jazz. Yeah. And Joe, you're not going to, uh, just so you know, you're not going to need a walker either, Joe. You're going to live long and strong. You're going to live long and strong. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, what a privilege, though, to do anything for God. I want to just quickly mention, before we go into uh, the word here, If it wasn't for my wife, I'd be, uh, thanks to her, we're all here today. Amen. She Amen. keeps us straight. Uh, I want to just mention this book real quick. God gave me this book to write, and I'm so thankful. Boy, Cynthia gave me a copy of her book. I'm excited to get into that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Wonderful. But this book, God gave me this book. Boy, it's not a good-looking cover, amen. But uh, <laughs> this book, God gave me this book for the glory of God. It's selling like crazy all across the country. The faith focus mind. How many know? How many have ever heard religious people say, "Well, you know, His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts." Yeah, because they don't read the verses before that that are clearly saying the ways of the world are not the ways of God. The thoughts of the world are not the thoughts of God. I mean, we can enjoy the mind of Christ. God's word wouldn't have said, lean not on your own understanding, unless he was going to give us another understanding. And he's not the author of confusion. And God wants to bless you. He wants you. This book, if you know how to read, you need to get a copy of this book. If yeah. you don't know how to read, get someone to read it to you and get a copy. Amen. You need this book. We don't put prices on anything. We just invite people to give their best gift of any amount to send us around the nation. But this book will bless you. And I want to read this dedication to you. I was just thinking about it this morning. Let's see who I dedicated this book to. I dedicate this book to Apostle and Pastor David T. DeMola. Other than my own father, no man has impacted my life in a greater way. He was my spiritual father. I will never forget his voice of faith that taught me what a loving God we serve. So much in this book I learned from him. I will never forget you, Pastor. You changed my life. Amen. We also have messages I would love to preach to you. You got your pastor here. How many know your pastor is a mighty preacher? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. A mighty teacher here. But I would love to get to preach to you on your way to work in the morning. I'd love to preach to you while you're making dinner. I would love to get to preach to you. This message here, when God says yes, boy, that message will bless you. Refuse to lose what God has given you. Go down through the different messages. Magnify the Lord. I mean, you are who God says you are. Man, I'm telling you what. I preach that in a mighty church down south. You are who God says you are. You're not what your bank account may say. What the doctor may say. You are. You know, how many people, they try to dumb down the word to get to their level of experience rather than letting their experience rise to the level of the word. Yeah. What the Word of God says must become more real than what you may be experiencing in the natural. By His stripes you are Amen. healed. must become more real than any other report in the natural. God is not a God who just responds to need. He responds. He'll look over a million people of need to respond to the one person of faith. Amen. Yeah. 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 Faith yeah. is the currency of heaven. And these messages will bless you. I hope that you'll take these home and you'll be uh, glad you did. But, hey, let's look into something here that I believe is going to <clears throat> bless you. And I believe that you're never going to be the same. There's so many things I'd love to go into. But just quickly, I want to fulfill my assignment here today. But again, it is such a privilege. How many know this is a blessed church? Amen. This is a favored church. This is a growing church. If this church was a stock, I would buy shares. I love to go, you know, it's great to go to churches that have a great history. But I love to be a part of a church that has a great future. Amen. This church, what a wonderful crowd today, Pastor. What a wonderful 
little group here. I mean, man, with God, this is not a small group. This is a wonderful, growing church. We speak the desired end result only. Yeah, this man, is a yeah. large, prosperous, yeah. mighty church impacting yeah. this region. Yeah. It's so incredible how with God, his plans <clears throat> are always good. And But again, I just want to quickly say, you know, I, I remember... I used to be so broke that I could, I was supernaturally broke. I could hardly pay attention, like they say. I mean, I, I used to, and, and I used to go on Thursday nights when I pastored in Patterson. I would drive on Thursday nights. You want to be here Thursday nights. I love that, that they're doing that. Because Thursday nights changed my life going to church. I was a pastor who needed a pastor. And I went on Thursdays. I could barely pay. I could barely in the natural afford the tolls on the parkway to get to Sayerville from Patterson. But man, we went there. I began to hear things I had never heard before. I began to hear the truth of God's word that lifted me and changed my life, changed my family forever, and changed my ministry forever. And isn't it exciting that you get to have a place to hear that same word, that same spirit here? I want you to give your pastors another big hand today. You are blessed. But today, I want you, if you get your Bibles here, repeat this after me if you would. I love to, to do this. You know, we look into the Bible because a lot of people, what they preach is their opinion. But how many know sometimes their opinion is wrong? Right. We have to go according to the Word of God. If someone's not biblical and they sound spiritual, they're just spooky. <laughs> but we go according to the Word of God. Come on, treat that for me. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. I can have what it says I can have. I can have what it says I can have. I can be who it says I can be. I can be who it says I can be. The Word of God. The Word of God. It's my source of faith. My and as I hear it, as I, hear, I will never be the same. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. I want to speak to you for a few moments here about the God of increase. Amen. The God of increase. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. Let's look at this quickly. <clears throat> I'm rebuking the symptoms of a little cold. Amen. I rebuke it. I don't sign for that package. Amen. Amen. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6. I have planted. Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Let's say it together. God gave the increase. Verse 7. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. You can write these down. I'm going to go quick through these verses. Deuteronomy 12, 20. The Lord your God will increase your territory just as he has Amen. promised you. Amen. Psalms 115 14. The Lord shall increase you more and more you and your children. How many receive it today? Amen. 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 Proverbs 4 18. <clears throat> the path of the righteous is like the morning sun shining ever brighter Amen. till Amen. the full light of day. Man, I love this Psalm 65 11. Psalm 65 11. It says, You crown 2020 with a bountiful harvest. Yeah. Even the hard pathways, think about that verse. Even the hard pathways overflow with abundance. That's who our God is. Our God is the God of increase. It's an even where I know I'm talking probably most of you city people, but you know, in the country, they know that if it's a hard pathway, I mean, that's probably not going to receive any seed. Right. It's tracked down. It's not a place that is conducive to soil. It says even in those hard pathways, even where things look impossible, even where it looks like no kind of harvest is coming, even where it looks like your past, whatever it is you're facing, looks too great, even there we are to expect our pathways to overflow with abundance. How do you know after the seed is planted, you don't see anything immediately happening? But how do you know under the soil, something is developing, something is growing, you don't see what God may be doing for you right now, but he's getting your spouse ready. He's getting your job promotion ready. He's getting things ready and in order.
order. It's just like when you're at a restaurant, you go to the steakhouse, you place your order. You don't see anything come out immediately, but something begins to be prepared for you back in the kitchen, man. Come on. You can start to smell it. It's coming because you place your order. And God wants you to know today that increase is something to be expected yeah. as a child of God. Yeah. Yeah. Some of you need to increase. Some of you need to put some batteries in your expector. Yeah. Some of you haven't been expecting much and you haven't been getting much. But God wants you to get your hopes up today. Yeah. Not the world's hope, but Bible hope. A confident expectation. You see, you got to know in the middle of a situation that it looks like decreases all around you, you have to know that God, the number one revelation you can ever have is who God is. Yeah. He is the God of increase. Yeah. Therefore, you can always know everything is going to be all right as I put my trust in Him. Yeah. Amen yeah. and amen. Yeah. Scripture after scripture we can go to wow. that shows us God is the God of increase not decrease. He's the God of forward, not reverse. He's the God of more than enough, not just enough. No matter how much joy you have, God has more. No matter how much peace you have, God says more. No matter how many resources you have, God has more. Whatever it is, God says, I want to bring continual increase your current situation must never determine your future destination. Yeah, God says your best yeah. is always yet to come. Yeah. 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 400 years the children of Israel were in a place of not enough. Then Exodus happened and they got into a place of just enough with daily matter. But how many know God always had a place of more than enough yeah. planned for them? Yeah. Yeah. We see people, God, what, what a selfish thing to say. Oh, all I want is just enough for me and my own to get by. You know, we just need enough just to get by. What a selfish thing. God wants you to be a conduit yeah. of his blessing. Some of you have a spare tire on your car, but no spare patience, no spare peace, right. no spare finances to help others. Right. God wants right. you to live in abundance in every single area of your life. My God doesn't bring the mess, but he'll clean up the mess. My God doesn't bring mourning, but he'll turn your mourning into dancing. Yeah. My God is the God of increase no matter what. Your situation looks like it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean you never have a problem, but you must know that problem has no right to stay. Because your God is the God of increase. I believe that God will never allow anything to happen to you. Unless he's already determined you can come out stronger. Everybody say stronger than before the attack. Stronger because he's the God of, come on, say it with me, increase. Don't feel bad for Job. Man, that was just a short season in Job's life. Yeah. Like Pastor and I were talking about it a while back. That was just a short season in his life. But how many know Job, the Bible says, got double for his trouble? Yeah. I've learned to not fear trouble. Because I know God can use my enemies to literally turn it around for my good. He's the God of increase. Man, David could have kissed every lion and bear that tried to stop him. It was preparing him for the giant, which propelled him on to be king. And Joseph, he could have been bitter with his family, those that tried to hurt him. But he went from the pit to the palace. Amen. It's the God of increase that we serve. Yes. David spoiled. God should go recover all. But he didn't just get back his stuff. Yeah, right. They got the Amalekite stuff. David spoiled. It took him days to get the increase. Do yeah. you think David after that would say, I wish they hadn't taken our family? He said, you know what? It all worked out. Amen. Yeah. Nothing missing, nothing broken, and more blessed than ever. Amen. Yeah. God's going to bring you into a place where you literally wouldn't even change anything. God's literally going to bring you into a place where things you wish had never happened to you, yeah. you're going to be able to say the God of increase brought me out and I wouldn't even change anything because of the glory that it gave God. I want 
want to live the kind. I don't know about you. I want to live the kind of life where people say, "How is he doing that? How does he have all that real estate? How does he have all these blessings? How, it's the grace of God. He don't deserve yeah. that." I it's a gift. Yeah. Isn't it great? Yeah. Well, righteousness is a gift. And the favor of God surrounds the righteous. Yeah. So get excited. You serve the God of increase. Yeah. The battle did not belong to Jehoshaphat. It belonged to the Lord. I believe it's so important to do ministry out of a rest. Yeah. To do anything in your life that God has called you to do out of a rest. How many know his yoke is easy? His burden is light. How you doing, brother? Oh, well, I'm carrying a burden. Why? He took our burdens. God wants us to live free of care. He is our caretaker. Amen. God wants us to live free. Of the weight of bondage, of care. He wants us to enjoy the ride, knowing that whatever we're facing, his plans are good to bring us out. Some of you need to understand today <clears throat> to keep speaking, as we said, the desire and the result. You know, a lot of people, when they speak, does the devil flee or does the devil say amen? amen. A lot of people, when they speak, the devil says amen. Come on, keep speaking. Keep declaring that. Oh, I'll never have that. The devil says, Amen. Come on. You can have what you say. Confession brings possession. Come on. Keep saying it. Yeah. But we have the power to speak life or death. Now I love, I don't have the time to go into this, but I just want you to get this quickly. I love how you can study this yourself this week, but Romans 117 talks about how God wants to bring us from faith to faith, right? right. Not faith to works. Right. Most right. people they accept Jesus by faith, but then they live the rest of their life in works. Right. Trying to earn his love. Trying to earn his victory. Trying to... I miss something. He's trying, it's amazing how many people, they try to earn his love, earn his victory, rather than, rather than trying to say, you know what? <clears throat> I understand that the word says I am to go from faith to faith to faith, rather than faith to works. And what happens when that happens? Why are we to do that? Because 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, but we all with open face, 2 Corinthians 3.18, we all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory. What's that say? As we behold who he is in a situation that feels like a demotion, as we focus on who he is, he brings us into promotion. Amen. As we focus on the God of increase in the middle of apparent decrease, we can do the impossible. You don't behold your bank account, you behold God's bank account. Yeah. You don't behold your power, you behold God's power. You don't behold your strength, you behold his strength. And the God of increase leads you forward. Genesis 1.28. So we know the God of increase does not change. Genesis 1.28. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. I know Gabriel and I are doing our part. Amen. Amen. <laughs> be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Eden was a place to expand. Eden was not finished. God said, I want you to bring increase to this place that I have placed you. And then we know that the second Adam came. Now, first of all, what did the enemy try to do? First, and I'm not afraid of the devil. You know, I go days without even thinking about the devil. Right. Yeah. If you've got something to say to the devil, write it on the bottom of your shoes. Yeah. He's under your feet. Yeah. I wake up sometimes, devil, I'm up. Here I come. He's not afraid of people that don't know who they are in Christ, but he is afraid of people who do. Yeah. And we know that the enemy brought deception. Eve allowed it, Adam allowed it, and the deception was for them to change their view of God was going to lead them into disobedience. Their view of God, when that changed, I 
think God's trying to keep the best away from you. I think if you can eat that fruit, go ahead. God's trying to hold out on you. And what happened? It led to deception. Isn't it amazing? A lot of people, when they believe something, even though it's not truth, if they believe it, it becomes their truth. Yeah. And that's their level of harvest. Yeah. You can believe that you can never be debt free, and that becomes your truth. But that's not the truth, because God says, oh, no man, anything but love, and he wouldn't command us unless he called us to be able to do it. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. So we need to understand our view of God is what changes everything. But then the second Adam, Jesus came and restored restoration after the fall. And Mark 16, 15, I want you to see this, man. Oh, I want you to see this. Mark 16, 15. What is the last thing that Jesus said before he ascended to heaven? Think about it. The God of increase. <clears throat> His plans are always for increase. And he wanted Adam and Eve. The enemy was not just after Adam and Eve. The enemy was after their potential for increase. Wow. The enemy was after wanting to stop them from being able to increase mm -hmm. after their own kind. Mm -hmm. What's the last thing? You know, just before I leave on a trip, if I'm going to be gone, the last thing I say to my wife, whatever it may be, or the last thing she says to me is going to be important. What's the last thing Jesus said? Mark 16, 15, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Yeah. He's saying my plans haven't changed. Your life is to bring increase wherever you are. Matthew 28, 19. Go and make disciples yes. of all nations, Jesus is saying. Listen, this is not the great suggestion. Wow. This is the great commission. Yeah. This is not the great option. This is not the great idea. This is the great commissioning of the church to understand that every one of us has the same God-given purpose. Yeah. It's to increase in our lives and yeah. to increase heaven yeah. by bringing as many yeah. people to heaven with us yeah. as we possibly yeah. can. Yeah. Nothing is more valuable than a soul right. because a soul lives forever. Amen. The enemy is not after just you alone. you got to understand the enemy is after your potential yes. for increasing the kingdom of God. Yes, yes. God wants to increase your life so that you will bring increase to others. Yes. God wants to bless you so you can bless others. God wants people to see in you something they want yes. so that they will serve yeah. the same God that you serve. Yes. Our God is the God of increase yes. who wants yes. to increase you now, but he wants to increase eternity yes. by using your life. Yes. Amen. Amen. Everyone I hear people, well, I just, I just don't know what my purpose is. I'll tell you what your purpose is. Bring as many people to heaven with yes. you as you possibly can. Right. Yes. Yeah. It's the only thing that will matter a thousand years from now. Yes, Bringing as many people to heaven as we possibly can. It's interesting in the Bible, in the scripture. There's always a top line and a bottom line. There's always a top line and a bottom line in every situation. You know, we had incredible in, uh, decrease in the natural years ago when I first became pastor. <clears throat> we had the men in our homes were taking cold showers. And the God, God spoke to me, you have not because you asked not. Mm -hmm. Other people they haven't asked for anything. That's right. You know, I don't go to God with my needs. I just go to God with what my desires are. When God meets my desires, my needs are already met. God's already yeah. promised, God's already yeah. promised yeah. to take care of my needs. Yeah. Yeah. You supply all my needs according to virtue. Don't talk, don't talk to God about your light bill. Talk to God about your dreams, your desires. Yeah. I love that paper old Pastor gave me. I love it. Setting your faith for increase. But God, you have not because you asked us. So I, I had never asked before. But I began to get a revelation that God's the God of increase. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want our men take cold showers. And I'll never forget going to Home Depot. And I said, Can I talk to the manager here? Can I talk to the head man? 
And the manager came over. I said, it would be a miracle. It was like $700 or something for two hot water years. I didn't have $7. Okay, okay. And I said, it would be a miracle if you would just give us two hot water heaters. Mm -hmm. He grabbed his walkie-talkie and said, uh, send up two hot water heaters. We're going to give them to this guy here. I said, oh, my God. Amen. <laughs> I have not been asked that. Got an increase. Our roof was leaking. When I would preach on Sunday mornings, Rain, you know, rain would be coming in on the platform. You know, we sing songs about Lord, rain on me. <laughs> but you don't want physical rain coming into your church. How many know that was not giving glory to God? Right. There's nothing spiritual about being poor. Right. There's nothing spiritual right. about being broke. Right. Jesus came to bring good news. What's yeah. good news to the poor? You don't have to be poor no more. What's good news to the sick? You don't have to stay sick. Yeah. What's good news to the depressed? You don't have to stay depressed. Amen. And here I was preaching the word of God, preaching the word of faith. Right. I'm preaching God wants to bless you. I'm preaching God wants to prosper you. And we got rain coming down. Because what the word of God says is more real than what I may be than what I was experiencing at that moment. What God said was more real than what the natural circumstance was. And I got people together, and I remember we just started thanking God. I said, we're going to start thanking God for a new roof. We don't know how we're going to pay for it. We don't know how. We just know who. We don't know how. We just know who. Can we say it together? We don't know how. We just know who. He already paid for it. He already took care of it. We received it by faith. I'll never forget turning the corner and seeing all of these people up on our church roof that somehow had heard about our need and they were putting a brand new roof on that church. I began to ask and ask and ask people to be a part of what God was doing. We had $25,000 total had come in the first year I was pastor. Now, that's all that had come in. The first year, $25,000. In the very next year, Almost 400,000 came wow. in. For the glory of God. Yeah. The God of increase. Yeah. I said the God of increase. Yeah. Brought it. We began to buy house after house and see what God was doing. But I'm telling you, the reason why was because God was not going to allow that situation. If we placed our trust in him, he was not going to allow us to stay in a place of decrease. And... Therefore, he brought us into a place of increase, number one reason, because of souls. Imagine. Do you know how many thousands of people have come to Jesus through those homes? That's what it's all about. Listen to me. There's always a top line and a bottom line to souls. Yes. Jonah, how many love the story of Jonah? Isn't that a great story? Yeah. I love the story of Jonah. Man, how many know Jonah could have been spit out in the water and drowned? Right. But as soon as he was swallowed up, he became, he was like in a, in a GPS, a whale that had a GPS heading straight for his assignment, right? Yeah. And he spit out on dry ground. That's a great story. Jonah survived. Yeah. He complained for like eight verses. How many of those who complain remain? Yeah, right. But it's when you change what you say. And begin, he began to look towards God and that, and that whale spit him out. How many know he had a reason to complain? Has anybody been swallowed by a whale lately for days? He had a reason to complain. But what happened? He was spit out. That's a wonderful story. But a lot of times people stop there, Pastor. They stop. Hey, he was in the whale. He, he was spit out on dry ground. And he lived. That's just the top line. The bottom line is that that city of Nineveh was a sick place. They were sick. That's why he didn't go there at first. He's like, man, just drop a bomb on those people. He said, I'm heading to Tarsus. I'm not going. But look what happened. He spit out on dry crowd, and that entire greater area, almost a half million people. Yes. <clears throat> These people that worshipped Aquaman, they worshipped uh, Dagon, their made up fish, man, God. What happened? Man, almost 500,000 people turned to God. That's the bottom line. Are you hearing me today? 
God has a top line for you that if you knew the increase God wants to bring into your life, you'd start running around screaming for joy right now. Yeah. But the bottom line is because he wants to use your life for souls. Yeah. I love the story of Daniel. He was cat sitting for the night. What a great story. Yeah. How he survived there. Daniel, are you alive? And he was still alive. Isn't that a great story? Yeah. But most people stop there. Yeah. That's just the top line. The bottom line is Daniel 6.25. Then King Darius wrote to all the nations and peoples of every language and all the earth. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom people must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. That's the bottom line. The top line is he survived and lived, verse 28, so Daniel prospered. Yes. That's the top line. But the bottom line is for the glory of God. People turn to the one true God. God may not remove the fiery furnace, but how many know the top line is you'll come out not even smelling like smoke. <laughs> But then eternal increase is going to come, and Nebuchadnezzar will declare, no one can speak against their God. Amen. God may allow you to feel like you're in a dungeon right now. You may feel chained up, dark. You may feel in bondage. The top line is as you trust God and release your faith, the top line is the earth is going to shake and you're going to be set free. But the bottom line... It's the jailkeeper and his whole family is going to turn to God. That's the bottom line. Like Paul and Silas. It's all about souls. Yes. Man, there's so much more we could go into today, but I just want you to hear me today. Jesus, he loved the one. He said, I'm going to the other side. He left the crowd for the one because he knew that one needed him. He went there and afterwards they said, Jesus, <coughs> It's in Mark chapter 5. He said, after the man was set free, he wanted to go with him. Verse 18, Mark 5, 18. And when he had come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed and him that he might be with him. So the man, listen, the man that Jesus set free said, Jesus, can I go with you now? And what did Jesus say? Jesus suffered a knock that said, go home to thy friends. And tell them how great things the Lord has done for you. Yeah. Man, I'm not called to be a judge. I'm not called to be a prosecuting attorney. But I am called by God, and you are too, to be a witness of what God has done. And what God wants to do for you. I've had enough of undercover Christians. All right. I've had enough of seeing people that have served God for years that have worshipped God, man, they speak in tongues hours a day. They can quote scripture, chapter to chapter, but they haven't led anybody to Jesus since 1969. God doesn't want us raising up fat Christian, fat believers, with fat cats for Jesus, where they've got the word in them. They've been fed the word for years. They've been fed the word for years, but never used it for their purpose. To win as many people for Jesus. We are created to be an announcer of the good news. A proclaimer of the good news. How many know when churches get away from winning the lost, they just get weird. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they become spas for the saved. <laughs> rather than hospitals for the hurting. Wow. Right. I never wanted to pastor a spa for the saved. I always said, I always wanted God to help me pastor a hospital where it was life or death. Where people that smelled different were still welcome, like this church. Where people that look a little different, that are tattooed up, that have colored hair, that have whatever, where they come in and feel the love of God. A lot of people, see, I've learned I like to fish, and when I fish, you know, I've learned you have to catch the fish before you clean the fish. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people, they say, well, they can come to my church as long as they get cleaned up first. No, come as you are. God wants you to see the greatest church growth concept 
is to have a church full of soul winners. When you get a church full of soul winners, increase automatically comes like it's coming here. You can have everything. How many know sheep create more sheep? Shepherds do not give birth to sheep. Yeah. I've never seen a shepherd pregnant with a sheep. Come on. Sheep give birth to more sheep. Yeah. And the shepherd's job is to equip the saints to go out and fulfill their destiny of bringing as many people to heaven with them as they possibly can. I hope every neighbor knows that you love Jesus. I hope every co-worker you have knows you love Jesus. I hope every, I was recently in Florida at one of the largest food outreaches in Central Florida. I'm walking around with the pastor who leads this food outreach. I mean, they spend thousands of dollars. They've got this huge outreach. And I just said, not sarcastically, I just asked them after the tour. I said, do you ever give people an opportunity to find Jesus? And he said, I've often thought about doing that. And it was like I just got kicked in the gut. What does it matter if we fill their bellies and they go to hell? Yeah. What's it matter if we give yeah, someone a yeah. coat yeah. and they're warm on their way to hell? Or it's yeah. going to be really warm. <laughs> What's it matter? The greatest miracle of all yeah. is when someone goes from death into yeah. life for eternity. Yeah. Yeah. What's it matter if your back gets healed and God says yes to your back being healed? He's already paid for it. But what's the matter if someone's back is healed and they've got a healthy back as they walk into hell? It's all about souls. It's all about eternity. Wake up every morning. Say, who can I lead to Jesus now? We have shelters because I was a stranger who took me in. The majority find Jesus. We feed people because... The majority find Jesus. Have the Easter egg hunt if you want to. If it helps people find Jesus. Have the, the Hot Wings Sunday if you want to. If it helps people find Jesus. Amen. I've seen churches spend thousands of dollars on events. And nobody got saved. How many of you are a vacuum salesman? It's about how many vacuums are you selling? How can we hear well done someday? If we haven't done what he commanded us to do, go ever since the Garden of Eden, and it hasn't changed. God says, bring increase to my kingdom. Man, my sisters went to the river down in Florida, and they just got crazy. They turned into crazy soul winners for Jesus. My sisters used to be so, i, I got to wrap up here. How many of you need one more minute? One minute, two minutes, three minutes. <laughs> I remember my sisters were so shy. They wouldn't pray in front of people. They wouldn't talk in front of people. But isn't it great? The Bible says, Matthew 4, 19, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. How is your fishing business going today? I will make you fishers of men. Yes, yes, yes. That's an arbitrary meaning. That means I will do with you if you let me what no one else can do with your life. Yeah. I will take you, mold you, and use you to do the impossible yes. if you will let me. They told me recently that hundreds of people, they have had the privilege individually of leading hundreds of people to Jesus. Wow. They used to go up into the bus stops. They used to jump up into the bus stops and, and climb up on the bus and start preaching the gospel. It's amazing they didn't get arrested. <laughs> they got on fire for God, fulfilling their destiny. I remember the first time I was preaching in New York, the first time I ever saw my wife. I was preaching in New York and I saw her walk in. Shafts of light began to fall down her head. Angel choirs began to sing. I said, I must disciple her. <laughs> we will be fruitful and multiply. <laughs> and I remember that pastor, they, he 
asked me afterwards if I would be willing, I told him I'd be willing to come back as an evangelist. This was before I was even a pastor. And I said, I will help you start a youth group if you'd like to. And we had, they had just a handful of kids. And I said, this is not going to be just a hangout where we drink some soda and chips and, you know. I said, this youth group is going to be all about winning your schools for Jesus. And we got up to about 30 kids or so. And I said, I want every one of you to make a list of 10 names of people you know that need Jesus. And we're going to put them up on the board. So 30 people wrote 10 names. How many names did we have? Very good. Some better than others. 300 names. So 300 names were up on the board. And we began to pray over those names. We began to declare they're coming to Jesus. Man, I'm telling you, we started checking names off as they came. We had van loads of kids coming in. That youth group got bigger than most churches. Why? Because we were focused. On our purpose of winning the lost. Yes, Jesus is coming back. Yeah. Yeah. He could come back next week. He could come back before the Super Bowl today. Yes, it's all about souls. It's all about bringing people you, to Jesus. The evidence that we are followers of Christ is that we are soul winners. We say there's nothing more important to God than going into my world and winning the laws. Isn't it great? Yeah. I don't care how old you are, you've got purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. No matter how old you are, it's to bring as many people as you can to Jesus. So, and see, so I've learned that with soul winning, I've learned I don't have the option to be distracted. Right. I don't have the option to carry care. I don't have the option to be consumed with my own issue. Right. issues. Or unforgiveness. I've learned to quickly forgive. I've learned to stay free because I have to be focused yes. on winning people for the Lord. And I want to I want to give you the opportunity right now. In just a moment, I want to give you an option. Opportunity to re-enlist in the Army of God. Amen? Amen. I served in the U.S. Army. That was many haircuts ago, many meals ago. <laughs> If I untie my hair, I kind of look like a well-fed Jesus. But one thing that I loved about in the army, one thing I loved about in the army was that we were focused on the mission of keeping this nation safe. Everyone had different areas, but we were focused on one mission together. This church, how many know this church can be focused? On winning people for Jesus. This church, Pastor, I don't see anything different that I would do. The only thing I would do different next week is have more chairs out because God's going to fill them. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's the only thing I see. See, people of faith get crazy. People of faith, you know, like I have a friend, he, God spoke to me, he's going to preach on TV. So he set up cardboard cameras all around his church. And started preaching to cardboard cameras before it happened. Well, guess who he's doing now? Preaching yeah. on TV. Amen. Amen. People of faith just get crazy. One time God spoke to me to go buy a home for 155000 across the street from the church. I walked over. They said, it's already under contract. You've already lost it. I said, no, go tell them. The pastor wants this house. They said, you need to have 155000 in cash in two weeks. I didn't have $155. <laughs> But God said yes. <coughs> See, when God says yes, you just agree with him. That's all. Yeah, that's right. A lot of people, they don't agree with God. God is saying good things, but they don't agree with him. And God supernaturally gave us the money in just those, time, those weeks. It was incredible how God gave us that property. I can go on and on what God has done for my family. God has brought increase in my family. God has brought increase in our ministry. But... It's all for souls. Yeah. It's so that we can bring the lost to Jesus. And so I want to give you an opportunity to re-enlist. If someone wants to come play, you can. And everybody, let's stand up together right now. And I believe this is going to be a day that we can always remember. A day of decision. 
And I, first of all, I want to invite, we have been seeing state to state to state people come to Jesus. I first want to give everybody an opportunity that you may not know for sure that you're right with God. I want you to know today that God is standing with open arms. You don't have to close your eyes or bow your head. I, who cares what people think? How many know this is between you and God? Amen. Amen. And I want to give you an opportunity right now to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. It's the greatest decision you can ever make. Super Bowl Sunday. Think about it. Super Bowl Sunday 2020. That sounds like a great day to be your new birthday. Amen? Yeah. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Every one of us have fallen short. We all need the grace of God. Thank you. And I believe there may be some people here today that you say, you know, I can't say 100% that I'm right with God. I can't say 100% that I know that if Jesus came back, I'd be ready for heaven. The other day I was out of state and I had to get my vehicle's oil changed. We had to drive about 1,500 miles this week, uh, not this week, that, that week to go to meetings. And so I was busy, man. I had to change my oil, and I was so busy. I ran into this place to get a, something to drink, something cold to drink, and it's down south. And I see a guy sitting there, and God said, he needs to know Jesus. And I'm like, God, I'm too busy right now. Now, I am not a stupid person. But what I, but what I did next was stupid. I walked away. I walk down the street, Pastor, way past this guy sitting on the bench. And I began to pray that God would send somebody to share the gospel with this man that needed Jesus. God did send somebody. He sent me. And I passed him by. Like the priests and Levite. They were singing, walk on by. They were too busy going to church. But the Samaritan had compassion. So I laughed at myself and turned around and walked back. I said, has anybody ever told you Jesus loves you? Oh, my mother, she used to take me to church. And he began to tell me how he's not serving God now. He's got two little daughters that have been wanting to go to church, but he never takes them. And I lifted, I reached out my hand. And then I'm telling you, I led him in the prayer of salvation. The joy that was on this man's face, it changed his life and his daughter's lives. But you know what? I felt like a refrigerator that was keeping food cold. I was doing what I was created to do. Amen. The joy that I had Amen. for fulfilling my purpose. Not because I'm a preacher, because I'm a child of God. Amen. 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 To know that it's going to matter a thousand years from now. It's what it's all about. And right now, I want everybody to say, preacher, I need to know right now, tonight, Today, I want you to pray with me. And I want, maybe it's your first time ever. Maybe you need a new beginning with God. But you said, preacher, today, I want you to pray with me. I want to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. If that's you, just wait at me real quick. Who cares what anybody thinks? Just wait at me real quick. Amen? Amen? Amen. Let's all pray this prayer together as a family. You ready? Let's pray this prayer together. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. <coughs> thank you. Thank you. For sending Jesus to pay for my sins. I confess Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I am saved. I am righteous. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. And now I want to invite everybody here right now. I want everybody that you want to re-enlist in the army of God. Let's just step out of our seat. I hope everybody will come. Just come down here and let's re-enlist as soul winners. Can we do that real quick? I want everybody to come down here real quick. And we are going to re-enlist. How many know this church has a mission to win this region for Jesus? This church has a mission until everybody in this city and the surrounding cities know Jesus. We have a mission. They're coming down. I hope everybody will come. You come down and re-enlist in 
the Army of God. We are so, I'm, I'm honored to have served in the Army, but what a greater honor to serve in the Army of God. We are soldiers for Him. And we have a great cause to increase heaven and decrease hell. Amen. Right now, we are re-enlisting. Pastor, I don't know what's more exciting to me than seeing an altar full of people re-enlisting as soul winners. Yeah. To say, I'm going out this week and I'm looking for people that I can bring light to. Wouldn't it be great if we had a natural cure for cancer in a syringe? Well, how many know Jesus is the cure for anything? Nothing is impossible for him. But imagine if you had the natural cure and you kept it to yourself. What a sick thing would that be? Well, I want to keep this for myself. You know, I, I'm good. I'm good, but I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to give that to anybody else. What a crazy thing would that be? But we have something greater than the cure for cancer. We have something greater than any kind of cure. We have the cure for eternity in hell. And isn't it great that we don't have to wait until heaven to live in victory? We have. Jesus wants to change this life. If, if Jesus didn't change our life here and now, I'm thankful for heaven. But how I many I need victory here and now, too? And Jesus says yes. So right now, we are re-enlisting as soldiers in the army of God. Let's, let's lift our hands right now. We lift our hands because we are surrendering to him. Saying, even when we don't feel like it, even when it's not convenient, just like me, it was not a convenient time for my schedule to stop and share Jesus with that guy. But isn't it great to be available? God's not just looking for your ability. He's looking for you to be available. Your availability. And I believe right now, this group right here, in Jesus' name, I declare, not hundreds, Thousands of souls are represented in this group right now. Thousands of souls are represented in this group right now. In Jesus' name. I want you to declare this after me. Come on. Heavenly Father, forgive me for ever being distracted from my purpose. As a child of God, I am a soul winner. I am the, a carrier. Of the, light of the light of God. Of God. Lead, me. Lead me. Order my steps. Order my steps. Help, me. Help me. Win those, win those. Who, you who you want me to win. I am available. I will go where you want me to go. I will do what you want me to do. To bring a harvest of souls to heaven. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can we just do some business with God for a minute? Come on, just say, God, I thank you. My children are saved in Jesus' name. Thank you. My uncle, my aunt, my parents are saved in Jesus' name. Come on, declare it. Say, they are saved. They are in the family of God. Declare right now. My co-workers, I declare. I declare. I call them saved. Use me to win them. Use me to win them. We re-enlist in the army of God. Oh, God, we thank you. 